taka da an saka iko kashe shi magana bai da hankali bace taso ba to bai da hankali duk bai da wanda yake zagi sai manzo Allah mu ma ba mu da hankali an taba annabi don haka duk irin mu bai da hankali ba mu da da an saka iko kashe shi kuma ba shi da duk wanda ya taba manzo Allah ko kashe shi bai da hukunci ko belle ya bai taba manzo Allah bai da hukunci illa kisa Muslimi in ya tu in ya zage manzo Allah ko ya ce ya tuba wannan tuba ta tsakani ne da Allah Allah amma dai sai mun kashe shi bai da hankali ya sanya ta ya sau waya bai da hankali ya sanya sau data bai da hankali ya sanya bude shahin facebook bai da hankali ya san da an kai yo mai cha ya goge don ma hukaci ka wadanga abubuwa da kun gane ku kashe shi an saka yi ku kashe shi kwata kun ba shi dai ba ko ta manzo Allah ku kashe shi babu wani hukunci ga zage manzo Allah illa kisa in ka tubu wannan tsakanin ka da Allah ce in ya ga dama ya ga amma dai mu na an ce mu kashe ka ko ta ba manzo Allah ku kashe shi kada ku tsaya fada mu hukuma a kashe dai in ce ba ba an ce ba dauka doka a hannu to ci ko mutu an ce ya laifi ga hannu yawa haji babu huk babu wani hukunci ba wani tawili da wani zaida ka zage manzo Allah hukuncin ka kisa ko limamin makka ya zage manzo Allah hukunci ne kisa balle wani dan iskan banza don haka ya tsayin ku nan tarbiyyan nan da shehu dan hudu yayi muku mu alhamdulillah kakanni mu mujahiduna ne kuma jihadin yana nan cikin zukatan mu in kana sun ka san mujahiduna haka muke taba addini ka gani taba addini don haka ga babu babu wani ku babu compromise is uncompromising taba manzo Allah kisa ne auz billahi minash shaitanir rajim peace be upon you all ladies and gentlemen uh thank you once again for coming uh it's not easy uh you you had that scholar from nigeria who just spoke right um wait a second yeah you just hope had the scholar from nigeria who just spoke not long ago right <laughs> okay i'll be addressing uh these issues uh this kind of things i'll be addressing it now and uh before then i'm trying to uh to put on another another scholar from uh from nigeria also who said uh, a similar sort of thing. so now i upload a video and then i play it it's, it's, it's about less than a minute uh video uh concerning one of these sunni scholars said he said it in our sign i'll translate it for you to 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 listen or to hear or to understand what he actually said right so let me play uh, the video here ina kira zuwa ga yaran da suke rashin mutunci a social media da tiktok su sani yadda suke jin zafin kai da wauta da rantse da Allah muna da yara da suke zafin kai da wauta duk wanda muka tura muka ce su bugai wallahi sai sun bugai kai ko wanda na rantse da irin mutum muka ce su dauko sai sun dauko in ya kamata su san wannan so da ita wannan da ce wannan da ira iranta da suke wannan rashin tarbiyar muna tura musu sako dukkan wanda zai yi magana akan social media irin wannan to san me yake fada in ba haka ba in ka zo kai mana wauta to muna da wawayen da zamu tura maka sama da kai ba maganin aya ko hadisi mataki za su daukan maka irin matakin da kai na wauta wannan rashin tarbiya ne da rashin mutunci da ita wannan yarinyar ta ainihin wato to Okay. <laughs> Now this this scholar I just played a Sunni scholar. His name is Asad Sunna, right? And the prior to that I played another Sunni scholar's video uh which I'm not really acquainted with his name, but people from Nigeria will know this scholar. So bara was billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Uh woman ahsana qawlan min man da'a ila Allah wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-muslimin. Hazi sabili adu ila Allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittaban wa subhana Allahi wa ma ana min al-mushrikin. Uh 
thank you all for coming for this program uh this is this is a very very important program that i i have been thinking of doing it and i think this is the right time to address uh such uh a theme now i play these two scholars video and i'll be playing the audio from from the from the girl the deborah samuel who was killed uh out of ignorance right but before that uh when you take to Quran chapter 49, verse 6, God is talking to the believers. He says, Ya yuwal lazina amanu, inja akum, fasikun binabain. Then he says, fatabayyanu, antusibu kauman bijahalatin. Then he says, fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. Now, what is God telling us in this verse? God says, oh, you who have believed, who you the believers is talking to you. Then he says, if an immoral, when we say fasiku, it's a fasaka. When we say fasaka, somebody who is uh, disobedient, somebody who is immoral, who acts immoral. When So when you say fasik, fasik is somebody who is an immoral person. So God says, when an immoral person brings you news, nabain, news, information, then for tabayyanu, then ascertain. You have to ascertain. You have to investigate. Then God says, lest you strike a people out of ignorance. You strike somebody out of ignorance. Then you will become remorseful over what you have done. Now, this is very relevant in every aspect of life. You don't just go and take a video just because somebody says, oh, Baba Shwaib is all that. Then he, hey, we have to do something. Like, this is arrant nonsense. And you listen to such scholars giving you such, uh, uh, exhorting you to such evil deeds and you think it's part of Islam? We are going to check. Right? We are going to check. Now, God is talking to the believers. Remember, it's not talking to the mushriks. And the mushriks are the ones who eventually go and kill somebody just because they cannot tolerate certain stupidity they are put in their books so that people will use it against them. And then they refuse to let people even speak out concerning these issues. I'm not saying somebody should go and insult another leader of any Islamic faith. No. Right? Good. So I'll be coming to that. Now, what we have seen in the video concerning what these two scholars said, they are Nigerian scholars and they are Sunni scholars, right? You can see they are inciting their people to go and kill. To go and kill. And I, I, don't, I have no idea what the police are doing. What is the president doing concerning this issue? What is the police doing concerning this issue? This is how Boko Haram evolves. This is how Boko Haram gets started. These are the scholars you listen to, right? Especially the Sunni scholars who are the Salafiya movement, right? The Salafiya movement. They are very extreme. And this is even the, this is just a nutshell of what you see concerning what these scholars can do. Asad the Sunnah in his video was saying that they have foolish people among them, the Sunnis, whom, if they, the scholars, send them to go and kill, they will kill. Do you, do you see how your scholars have taken you to be? <laughs> Asa the Sunnah, the one I just played his last video right now, he is saying they, the Ali Sunnah, they have even foolish people among them that even if they tell them, go and kill, they will do it. This is religious fanatism. This is what we call extremist, the terrorists you have. And you call these ones preachers. You call these ones scholars. Right? I'll be playing the girl's audio that she sent in a WhatsApp message. And it was carried, taken out of context because the girl wasn't just intentionally insulting the prophet, but it was taken out of context because of a choice of word she used. Do you see the problem? Now, this is what happens when ignorant people take an information which has not been comprehended. Then they go and act because their scholars tell them to do so. Do you see? Huh? Do you see? Uh -huh. 
So when you are not willing to listen carefully and use your reasoning, this is the end of the ignorance. Wallahi. Quran chapter 25 verse 44. It says, do you think that most of them listen or reason? Do you know what God says? No, they are just like livestock. And God says they are even far astray than the livestock. Most people. You understand? They put so much emotion in religion. I, I was reading a comment online. Somebody said, even if you insult his father, he doesn't care. But touch, insult the prophet and see what he will do to you. How can a stupid person say that such a statement? So your father is useless when it comes to religion, right? <laughs> so it's only when they insult a prophet, you have to kill somebody. Where did God ask you to do that? I'll be taking you to the Quran and see the insults the prophet had at his lifetime. God never asked him to touch anybody. Did he even say, go and kill somebody? No. I'll be giving you that such evidences in the Quran. Quran chapter 2, verse 190. This is what God is exhorting the believers. Quran chapter 2, verse 190. I'll be playing the girl's video, uh, audio. You will listen to her and you hear what she said. So that you can see clearly how her words were taken out of context, right? Now, God says in Quran chapter 2, verse 190, he says, Now, listen carefully what God is telling the believers. He says, And fight those who fight you in the way of God. And fight those who fight you in the way of God. Then he says, but do not aggress. Indeed, God does not like the aggressors. Now, when we say aggress, this is a verb, right? Aggress is to take the initiative and go on the offensive. This is aggression. A disposition to behave aggressively. Violent action that is hostile and usually unprovoked. A feeling of hostility that arouses thoughts of attack. Now, let's take the instance of the girl. Okay, let's say she said what she said. Now, you, you took the loss into your own, own hands out of ignorance. You brutalized her. You killed her. You burnt her alive. Right? Now, what is the looting for? Why are you going to people's shops? businesses breaking them down stealing people's items i saw the video you see that what ignorance can cause a lack of knowledge my people perish now if you claim the girl has blasphemed okay you have killed her right you got what you want right but why are you looting why are you breaking down people's businesses shops and taking items for what who are you showing your anger to and it is your own president who is on the on this chair. That is Bukhari. A so-called Muslim president is sitting on the chair and you guys are doing this. How do you want other uh, uh, religious affiliation to tolerate this nonsense? So now if the Christians also say, okay, we were not going to agree, let's fight. Then it, what does it become? A fight out of people's ignorance. Now, we see in the Quran clearly, even if it is the notion of fighting, even if it is a notion of fighting, do you see what God is saying? Fight those who fight you in the way of God, but do not aggress. So even if somebody is fighting you, God says you shouldn't be on the aggression side. Do not aggress. But what do you see of the so-called Muslims of today? Aggression. Aggression. I spoke about something in my video, and I said the prophet of the Hadith, uh, the prophet at Hadith is a fake prophet. And I said the prophet of the Quran is the real prophet. Somebody wrote to me recently. He said, if you are a man, go to Sokoto and say the same thing. And I gave him reply. So this is how foolish you have deemed the people of Sokoto to be when it comes to the religious issue, right? So I should go to Sokoto because they are the ones out of ignorance. They will not tolerate such a statement. 
because I was only talking to intelligent people. But when people refuse to use, to listen and reason, this is what, what it brings to an end. Do you see? So now you are painting even real Muslims, not fake Muslims, you are painting real Muslims black, whilst this is limited to a cult. This is a Sunni type of teaching. That is why we have Boko Haram. Boko Haram is a Sunni cult. They are killing people. You go to Somalia, we have Al-Shabaab. It's a Sunni cult. This is what the Hadith books teach them. And I'm going to quote the Hadith. You see it if you think I'm joking. Wallahi, I'll quote the Hadith. I'll put it on the screen. You see it. This is what the Hadith books teach them. You don't get this nonsense in the Quran. It's not there. And I'll show you where prophets and messengers were even mocked and insulted. God never said they should move an inch to kill somebody. Why? We see presidents of nations being insulted today. Donald Trump being insulted. Top, top people being insulted, mocked. Why, why will you go and fight and kill? For what? Let people mock you. You are, you are rather letting them see their stupid side if they mock you and insult you. You just ignore them. When God is insulted, you are okay. But when Prophet Muhammad and the fake prophet of the Hadith, not the Quran, the, the one in the Quran is the real one. The one they gave you the narrations and the stories about him marrying CCS old girl, sleeping with 11 wives in one night, that you agree. So when that one is mocked, hell break loose. You want to kill. Is that so? Is that what ignorance will lead you to? No problem. I will quote some couple of verses. Then I will take you to a verse uh, from uh, a, 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 a portion of their hadith to show you where they get this kind of uh, things from. When you go to Quran chapter 60 verse 8, God says in the Quran, God does not forbid you. He does not refrain you, the believers. He doesn't refrain you from those who do not fight you because of the religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous or nice to them and be, uh, being equitable. God does not refrain you from being equitable to people who don't fight you because of religion and who don't expel you from your homes. Look at especially Ghana and Nigeria, I can see. Christians and Muslims, they live in harmony. You will find a house which belongs to a Christian and you find the tenants being Muslims and there is no problem. They are not fighting you because of your religion. They are not evicting you from your homes before because of religion. So even if somebody says something, don't you have elders? Don't you have leaders that you can take the issue to? And this issue can be resolved and solved in the best amicable uh, way where the world can be at peace. And you come out, out of your ignorance and tell the people, oh, Islam means peace. Is that peace you are seeing? <laughs> is that the definition of peace? Do you see how ignorance can take people? How far ignorance can take people? Good. So Quran chapter 60 verse 8. God does not refrain you from those who do not fight you because of the religion. He doesn't refrain. No, and they do not expel you from your homes. God doesn't refrain you from being nice to them and being righteous to them and being equitable to them. He doesn't refrain you. Indeed, God loves those who are equitable. So this is justice. Sit, be with people in harmony, even if you differ in, in opinion, in, uh, in views. You understand? Because they are not fighting you. Now, I'll give you certain examples in the Quran that the verses of God, according to God, when they are being mocked or insulted, according to God, don't even go and fight. <laughs> you stay away. And I'll bring it to that, that verse. Huh? Mm hmm Yeah, salam. Uh, sorry, guys, I wasn't uh, focusing on the comments because I was busy with, uh, you know, focusing on on, on 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 the main aspect of the topic, right? Uh, so let me let me play uh, let me play this audio from the girl. Now, listing what transpired. The reason why I started quoting chapter forty nine verse six 
and God is talking to the believers. And he says, if an immoral person brings you an information or a news, then you have to investigate as a team. Now, listen carefully. I'm going to play the audio and listen carefully what the girl said and what caused all this nonsense to happen. Angered our fellow students in Sokoto to lynch her as emerged. The victim was accused of blaspheming the leader and founder of Islamic religion, Prophet Muhammad, in a school WhatsApp group chat. Deborah was a student of Sheo Shagari College of Education in Sakata State. In the audio of Tinba, Yama Television, the lady warned her classmates against posting religious things on class WhatsApp group chat. She reportedly said in this audio in Hausa language. Holy Ghost fire, but I wouldn't say if I do them. Do I know what's up when they come out of Kutura? But where are you grouping the room to the Kudabu and Banzabalifa? And you do pass you in a quietest. I'm repeating the audio again, and you can check how a uh, uh, message was taken out of context. I'm going to play it again. The audio of what slain Deborah Samuel said that angered our fellow students in Sokoto to lynch her as emerged. The victim was accused of blaspheming the leader and founder of Islamic religion, Prophet Muhammad, in a school WhatsApp group chat. Deborah was a student of Sheo Shagari College of Education in Sakata State. In the audio of Tinba, Gama Television, the lady warned her classmates against posting religious things on class WhatsApp group chat. She reportedly said in this audio in Hausa language. Holy Ghost fire, but I wouldn't say if I do now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, wallahi, this is enough. I'm going to translate uh, Vora Vora, uh, Salam Marwan. I'm going to translate, but this is enough. You heard clearly what transpired. She said it in Hausa language. I'm going to translate. The school have the school has a WhatsApp group where students are be, to be sending their assignments or classworks or concerning exams where all the group members can benefit. Then the girl when she said people should stop putting irrelevant videos or religious videos in that group i think somebody sent a video concerning prophet muhammad or any something about prophet muhammad you understand so let's not take the girl's statement out of context heck, heck what she did was based on the context if you take it out of context this is what you cause foolish people like this to go and kill her her message was taken out of context. I myself, Shaim Abdullah, I do, I do that. Sometimes at my workplace, if somebody wants to bring a topic of religion, I tell him, hey, man, let's put religion aside. I'm not interested in that. That's not what I'm doing here. Do you see the point? It doesn't mean I'm insulting religion or condemning uh, religion. No. But when your message is taken out of context, as some foolish scholar in Ghana did to me, he went ahead telling people, Baba Shaib, I'm insulting the prophet. That's what he said. <laughs> you see the foolishness. And all these violence are being incited by foolish scholars. I repeat, Wallahi, foolish, cultic, and, and fanatic uh, type of scholars. They are the ones inciting foolish people to do foolish things. And I showed you the video concerning Asadu Sunnah, what he said. He said, among the Ali Sunnah, they have foolish people whom if they send to go and kill, they will kill. And you are sitting there claiming you are the, the servants of such scholars. You will not learn for yourself. <laughs> Husband Allah, when you will kill. You see where ignorance will take you. Now, what the girl said was based on in context. The school has a group. 
for students of that school for learning purpose and also for uh, like to prepare for exams. Then somebody out of ignorance went and shared something concerning religion, especially I think it's about the Prophet Muhammad, right? In the group. So the girl got upset and she said, we didn't create this group for this kind of things. So stop sharing. And I think the person escalated the issue again. I, I don't know if it's repeated again. Then the girl said, stop putting these religious things in this group. That's not why the group was created. It was created because of uh, this uh, exams and whatever this concerning the school. So the girl went ahead and then she said, stop putting stupid things. So when she says stupid things or useless things, then she extended by mentioning like you, you keep putting issues concerning the Prophet Muhammad. So as soon as she said that, this statement was taken out of context as if she intentionally was insulting the Prophet. Do you see how a message can be misconstrued? Just because of the ignorance of people, when they are listening to you, there's something they are looking for. As scholars of Ghana do to me, right? I was talking about God, and I mentioned the issue concerning God. And I said, when it comes to God, put everybody aside. Put Jesus aside. Put Prophet Muhammad aside. They are ordinary. As soon as I said ordinary, a foolish scholar in Ghana, he went and sat on his, uh, his platform telling scholars in Ghana that they should come and fight me because I was insulting the prophet. Why? Because I said the prophet was ordinary. Are you a fool? Why, if you are a scholar, why will you take such a statement out of context? When it comes to God, don't put anything. God doesn't have any equals. He doesn't have any equals next to him. So when I said, when it comes to God, put everyone aside, put Jesus aside, put Prophet Muhammad aside, they are ordinary. And a foolish scholar in Ghana went and said, he's calling the scholars, come, 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 this guy is insulting the Prophet. Come, come and come, let's join together and face him. He's calling the Shia, the Sunni. You see the foolishness. So these are the kind of stupid scholars we have all over who incite ignorant people to go and do bad things against people. And to disturb the peace of a nation. Now, do you know the, the, the magnitude of what is what has happened? Do you know the magnitude of what has happened? Do you know the chaotic uh, understanding concerning religion? How now it has turned into something of, 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 of how will I say, something of a disgusting info, uh, uh, thing to, to think about? Right? And you say blasphemy. Is that what, how you define blasphemy? Blasphemy? Okay, let's move on. When you go to Quran chapter 6, verse 68, uh, I, I might share the screen to show you the verse. Quran chapter 6, verse 68. Let's see what God says concerning. Uh, let me share the screen, right? I share the screen and let's see what God says. Quran chapter 6, verse 68. And God is clearly saying in this verse, He's telling the Prophet, alayhi salam, the Prophet himself, God is telling him, Wa iza ra'ayta lazina yahuduna fi ayatina fa ahrid anhum hatta yahudu fi hadithin gayrihi. So God is telling the prophet in this verse, and when you, you, Muhammad, when you see those who wage against our verses, against the verses of God, then turn away from them until they engage in another discussion, meaning hadith, a discourse, a discussion, another hadith, right? A discussion, right? Then God says, and if the devil causes you to forget, right? If the devil causes you to forget, then do not sit with the transgressing people after the remembrance. God didn't say fight them. Listen, he didn't say fight them just because they are waging against the verses of God. He didn't say attack them. He didn't say fight them. 
He says, if the devil causes you to forget, then do not sit with the transgressing people after the remembrance. When you remember, you get up and go. He didn't say fight them. Now listen to verse 69. And not upon those who are pious is their reckoning, meaning the reckoning of these people who are waging against the verses of God, the blame will not be on a pious person. Then God says, but call to remembrance, perhaps they will reference, meaning they will have the fear of God. So you have to remind them, just remember, remind them and say, hey, uh, guys, this thing you are saying is, uh, is, is not good. Stop saying it. If they are good people, they will take heed to that. If they are not, why not? Stay away. God didn't say go and fight them just because they wage against the verses of God. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are following this point. Aha. Uh -huh. God didn't say just because somebody wage into the verses of God, so fight them because they are uh, they are going against the verses of God. So that's number one example I'm giving you. I'm coming to the point. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the next one can be found in chapter 4, verse 140, concerning the verses of God. Now, we can see clearly, according to God, even if somebody is insulting the verses of God, stay away. And I'll be coming to the issue how we can build this to have people mutually respecting other people's faith and belief. I'll be coming to that. As a nation, we have ways and means to set forth rules whereby somebody will not, you understand, transgress the limit of your faith. But then when we go to Quran chapter 4, verse 140, I take you to Surah to Nisa, chapter 4, verse 140. And I'll put the verse on the screen and let's see what God says in that verse, right? Quran chapter 4, verse, chapter 4, verse 140. God says, and it has been revealed to you, that is you the believers, it has been revealed to you in the book, in the Al-Kitab, that whenever you hear the verses of God, Ayatullahi, being blasphemed and humiliated. Listen carefully. Being blasphemed or humiliated, then do not sit with them. Do not sit with them. He didn't say fight them. Listen, this is God instructing us. And it has been revealed to you, the believers, in the book that whenever you hear the verses of God being blasphemed and humiliated, then do not sit with them until they engage in another discussion or in a different discussion, in a different discourse. Other than it, other than being blaspheming the verses of God, unless they engage in another discussion, fine, then you can engage with them. Then God says, otherwise, you will then be like them. Indeed, God will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers all together in hell. Do you see this verse? God is telling you and I, if you are a believer of the, the verses of God, God is telling you that if you hear the verses of God being blasphemed and then humiliated, being mocked, somebody is rejecting or blaspheming the verses of God. Listen. God didn't say go and fight. He says stay away. Be humiliated. He didn't say go and fight. He said stay away. As simple as it is. Do you think ignorant people can uphold this command of God? The answer is no. Do you see? Good. So this is when it has to do with insulting the verses of God. God says stay away. And I'll be coming to the issue of God himself and also the, the prophet and the messenger's issue right i'll be addressing that point so now we can see in quran chapter 4 verse 140 god himself is telling us when you hear or if you see the verses of god being mocked being blasphemed god says you stay away from them do not sit with shatter people change please Change location. Don't be there. He didn't say go and fight. He didn't say go and kill them. Please. 
I'm coming to that point. This is about the verses of God, number one. So imagine going to somewhere and then listening to people blaspheming the verses of God. And imagine these cultic people, eh? these people from the cult. Imagine how intolerant they will be. If they are, the such scholars they have tells, tells them, go and kill, they will kill. Yes, because the Hadith tells them to do so. Yes, the Hadith tells them to do so. And I'll be coming to that. I'll, I'll, I'll show you the evidence from their Hadith books, how the Hadith incites them to do such things. Now, insulting God. Let's check the verses concerning insulting God. Did God say we should go and kill somebody just because they mocked or insulted God? So let's check. Remember, God can fight for himself, right? Good. Yeah. Remember, God can fight for himself. Good. So Quran chapter 6 verse 108. Let's check the verse and what it says. Quran chapter 6 verse 108. That is Surah Al-An'am. And let me share the screen and let's see what God says in that verse, right? Concerning in case somebody insults God. Uh, what is the scenario or what should happen? So God says, Wala tasubbu lazina yaduuna min duni lahi fayasubbu fayasubbu laha adwa bigayril ilm. So God is telling us in this verse, and do not insult those they invoke besides God. So let's say somebody is in calling on Jesus as his God. Don't go and insult Jesus. Let's say somebody is worshiping, worshiping Prophet Muhammad. Don't go and insult Prophet Muhammad. You see, now, the, the issue here is we are going to deal with ignorance. Why people will act out of ignorance. Do not insult those they invoke besides God. Now we know in Islam, the mushriks, they are, in, they are calling on Muhammad in their salat. They worship Muhammad. <laughs> we all know that. So I want you to understand this perspective, why these people can go to the extreme to kill somebody. So that is why when you check my title, I say blasphemy according to the mushriks. So according to the mushriks, this is how they will act after of ignorance. God says, and do not insult those they invoke besides God. So if somebody is idolizing Muhammad as his God or as his idol, I don't need to insult him. If somebody is idolizing Jesus as his God or idol, I don't need to insult him. If somebody is in, uh, idolizing his scholar as his God or idol, I don't need to insult such an idol. Why did God say that? Then he says, then they will insult the real God, Allah himself, in enmity without knowledge. So meaning without knowledge, out of ignorance, this person, if he doesn't have the means to even insult you back, he has to attack you. So do you see where the problem actually arised? So this is the advice of God here. And do not insult those they invoke. Now the moment somebody idolizes a person or anything, in the level of a God, that is when they will act like that, what happened in Sokoto. Do you see the advice of God? Then God says, Thus have we adorned to every nation their work. Then to their Lord is their return, and he will inform them of what they have been doing. So it is only out of ignorance, without knowledge, somebody will attack you, insult you, fight you because they think you have insulted what they invoke. So this is why, this is what the Hadith teaches the sectarians to be. They idolize Muhammad, they love him more than any other thing. Why Quran chapter 2 verse 165 is telling you to love God more than any other thing. But the Hadith is telling them to love Prophet Muhammad more than their mother, more than their father, more than everything in this world. Even including God. They love Muhammad more than God. I'm serious. I'm not joking about this. You mention to any mushrik, say Allah. He will not say anything. 
but just say Muhammad. Or you say, you say Muhammad without even say Nabi Muhammad, he'll get frustrated. Just say Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They will say a thousand times. Good. So we analyze from this verse, chapter 6, verse 108. Do you see what is going on? So God is telling you, do not insult those they invoke besides God. So anybody who is idolizing someone next to God, don't make a mistake to insult such a person. Yes. Then Quran chapter 5, verse 64. I will share the screen, then we see what the uh, verse also say, right? Quran chapter 5, verse 64. Yeah, I will share the screen also, and let's see the verse. Quran chapter 5, verse 64. That is Surah Al-Ma'idah. And let's check what the verse is. Let me share the screen, and let's see what the verse is. Right? Quran chapter 5, verse 64. So God says, and the Jews have said, the hand of God is shackled. Rather, their hands are shackled. And they are cursed for what they said. In fact, his hands, that is the hands of God, are both extended. Uh, they are both extended, dispersing however he wills. And what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, from your Lord, will increase many of them in transgression and disbelief. And we have cast antagonism uh, and hatred among them till the day of resurrection. Whenever they ignite a fire for, fire for war, God extinguishes it and they strive on earth with corruption while God does not like the corruptors. Right? So we can see in the past, we have the Jewish people who insulted God by saying the hand of God is shackled. Then God says he has rather cursed them. You see the fight between us and God. It is God who will rather fight you. Unless if you go to fight another human being who serves God, then he can retaliate. But there is no way God says human beings should go and fight for him on his behalf. No. No. Quran chapter 2 verse 190. God says, and fight those who fight you in the way of God. So meaning if I'm serving God and somebody is fighting me because of the God, I can defend myself. But there is no way God says I should go and fight on his behalf to protect him. No. So we see clearly when some of the Jews said the hand of God is shackled, God gave the reply by saying rather their hands are shackled and they are cursed for what they said. In fact, his hands are both extended, dispersing however he wills. So do you see? So if it is God, somebody is insulting. God himself will fight that person. God didn't say go and fight for him. No. But the reason why earlier on I quoted chapter 6, verse 108, is because the ignorant people will be the ones to fight for their idols. And this is why this girl was killed. Right? Uh -huh. Now, we have seen the verses concerning insulting the verses of God or mocking the verses of God. Nowhere did God say go and kill somebody or fight somebody because they are insulting the verses of God. We see the verses concerning insulting God himself. Nowhere did God say go and fight people or kill people because they insulted God. Now, what about the issue of insulting or harming or saying offensive things to the prophet? Let's check the verses. When you take Quran chapter 91, uh, chapter 9, verse 61 to verse 65. Uh, let me see if I can share the screen for that. Chapter 9. Verse 61 to 65. And I shared a screen on that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Abu Bakr Muhammad Ijani. Yes. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 9, verse 61. And I, I, we are going to check to the 65, right? So God is saying in this verse, and among the hypocrites, whom, among the hypocrites, are those who offend. The word is yuzuna. That is yuzuna. 
those who offend the prophet by saying he is all ears. Now, in our modern day and age, this is an insult. Like somebody will say you are all ears, meaning you hear everything, you are all ears. It's an insult. It's offensive, right? Among them are those who offend the prophet by saying he is all ears. Then God asked the messenger to say, say, all ears, uh, all ears uh, is better for you. He, the prophet, he, the prophet, he believes in God and believes the believers. He trusts the believers. And as a mercy for those who believe among you. As for those who offend the messenger of God, they will have a painful punishment, but not by the hands of the people, by the hands of God. So it is God who will deal with them. Now, fast forward. When you go through out the context and come to verse 65, God says in that verse 65, Listen carefully what God says concerning that issue. When you go to verse 65 here down below, then God says, and if you, you Muhammad, if you should ask them, they will say, we were only waging and playing. They will say we were only playing, even though they are mocking him, they are insulting him. Then they will say, we were only waging and playing. Then God asked the messenger, say, is it God, his verses, and his messenger, you are mocking? Is it God, his verses, and his messenger, you are mocking? Throughout the verses, nowhere did God ask the messenger and the believers to kill them, to kill those hypocrites. No. It doesn't mean I'm in support of the mocking. It doesn't mean I'm in support of the insult. We will find a solution to that. Now, when I take you to Quran chapter 33, verse 57, listen what God says, because this is an issue which God himself has to deal with somebody. It is not to be taken into the hands of people to make the decision. Do you understand? Uh, Daniel Daniel, chapter 9, verse 29 should be taken into context. It is not a separate verse alone. Connect the context. If you start from verse 1 coming, it tells you that people who want to seek refuge with you, asylum with you, give them refuge. Give them place to stay. Don't fight them. So in context, it is talking about the mushriks at that time, not this time. Right? So understand the context of the verses. Now, we go to Quran chapter 33, verse 57. Yes, salam, uh, Zamani, but you write in Naganka. Salam, Danlad uh, Suru. Yeah. So now I'll take you to Quran chapter 33, verse 57. Let's see what the verse says. That is Surah Al-Ahzab, 33, verse 57. Yeah, then I'll share the screen and let's see what the verse says, right? Uh -huh. Let me share the screen. Let's see what the verse says concerning the issue of insult or offend, offending uh, the prophet or the messenger, right? Now, see what God says. God says, Inna lazina yuzuna allaha wa rasulahu. He says, indeed, those who offend God and his messenger, God has cursed them in the world and the hereafter and prepared a humiliating punishment for them. He didn't say those who offend or those who insult God and his messenger that the believers should go and kill them. He never said so. No. Nowhere did God say those who offend or insult God and his messenger, meaning somebody should go and take a knife and kill them or somebody should go and burn them. No, he never said so. God will do his own fight, not you. <laughs> Is there anyone in the whole universe who kills people more than God? Is there anyone in this universe who takes people's life more than God? Do you know how many people, how much people God has taken their lives? So if somebody is an enemy to God, is it you who has to fight for God? Husband Allah wa Nimal Wakil. Quran chapter 33 verse 57. He says, indeed, those who offend God and his messenger, God has cursed them in the world and the hereafter and prepared for, for them, that is a humiliating punishment so he didn't say you go and kill them no no 
The God you are serving is not an, uh, an evil God. He doesn't incite you for evil. The only time he asks you to stand up for your rights and defend yourself is Quran chapter 22, verse 39. He has given you permission to fight because people are fighting you. Fine. Then you can fight to defend yourself. But nowhere did God say, go and fight to defend him or his messenger. No, just because somebody insulted the messenger or somebody insulted his verses or somebody insulted God himself, no single verse did God say that. I hope you are, you are following the point I'm making here. Okay. So we go to Quran chapter 15. I take you to Quran chapter 15, verse 94 to verse 97. And I show you something interesting from these verses. Quran chapter 15, verse 94 to 97. Let's see what the verses say. And I'll share the screen. Then I tell you what the verses say, right? So Quran chapter 15, verse 94 to verse 97. Yeah, it is better. Is 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 better than sugar coated lies. Yes, the bitter truth is better than sugar coated lies. So I would rather speak the truth to your faces, and be free. So Quran chapter fifteen, verse ninety four to ninety seven. Now check the verses clearly. What God is telling the messenger, He says, so expose clearly, as da. Expose clearly what you are commanded and turn away from the idolaters, the mushriks. This is what God told the, uh, Muhammad. Then verse 95, indeed, we will spare you the mockers. Do you see what God is telling the messenger? Then he says what? We will spare you the mockers. Meaning God knows people will mock the messenger. But he said, we will spare you the mockers. God didn't say, Muhammad, when they mock you, kill them. When they mock you, go and cut their heads. Burn them alive. God never says so. No, no. So God himself is telling Muhammad in the Quran, chapter 15, verse 95. Indeed, yeah, musta, musta. Zi'in, we will spare you the mockers. Because people will mock the messenger of God. They will mock God. So this is why Quran chapter 6 verse 68 is clearly telling you, when you see the verses of God being mocked, stay away. Quran chapter 4 verse 140, you see it being blasphemed and mocked, stay away. Nowhere did God say go and fight for him and his messenger because he has been insulted or he's been mocked. No. We are not saying people should do that. But what, what is the extent of going to kill somebody? Then the verses continue. Indeed, we will spare you the mockers. Verse 96, who assign another God with the God? But they will find out because God will deal with them on the last day, not you. Verse 97, and we suddenly know that your bosom will be troubled by what they say. God told the prophet. Meaning, God knows. He told the prophet, we will spare you the mockers. And God repeated by telling him, we certainly know that your bosom, your chest, will be troubled by what they say. So even, God, even though God told him, we will spare you the mockers, of course, if you are being mocked, let's say you are telling somebody the truth and you are being mocked, it will hurt you. But did God say he should go and kill somebody because he's being mocked? The answer is no. If you define your religion as peace, then act upon it. Let's see. So Quran chapter 86 verse 17. Let's see this in a nutshell. Quran chapter what? 86 verse 17. Right? I put a verse. 86 verse 17. Yeah. Uh yes. Uh yes, salam Sayyid Adam. Welcome. Rabbi John says, to my understanding, I can clearly see that hadith has created more harm than good for Muslims. Yes, it's it's evident, it's true. 
It is the biggest catastrophe ever in religion. What Hadith has done, right? It is the same thing which causes division among Muslims, a big division as a matter of fact. And it's the same thing which causes this hatred and antagonism and the killing you have around you. Uh-huh. It is the same Hadith this Boko Haram people will uphold to even kill scholars in Nigeria. Boko Haram. And at the end, they claim they are Ali Sunnah. <laughs> so Quran chapter 86 verse 17. God says, فَمَنْ هِلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْ هِلُهُمْ رُوَيْدًا This is what God told the Prophet. فَمَنْ هِلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْ هِلُهُمْ رُوَيْدًا Chapter 86, verse 17. So God is telling the Prophet, so respite the disbelievers, respite, respite the disbelievers, respite them gently. Because God knows the mocking they will do the insulting they will do, it will offend the prophet, it will trouble him, but he told him to respite them. That is the perfect example you can show your enemy. You understand? And one thing I've learned in my life, when people insult me, when people write things, negative things about me, I don't react with anger, I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. Sometimes I'll act like I don't even care. <laughs> you understand? Uh -huh. For me to go and react, for you to be happy, for me to get angry, for you to be happy, I just laugh at you. And this is what God told the prophet, to respite the disbelievers, respite them. Why should we be offended? Because somebody insulted you? Because somebody mocked you? So God told him, فَمَنْ هِلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْ هِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدًا so respite the disbelievers, respite them gently. Not only respite, respite them gently. Not aggressively, respite them gently. So we see the, the notion of concerning uh, people who say, oh, they insulted the prophet. So nowhere in the Quran will you see a single verse where God says the prophet was offended or insulted. So go and kill people. Go and burn people. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. But the hadith, I'll be showing you. Now I'm taking you to this hadith. Then you go and you see where these people got the, the, this kind of uh, uh, incitement to react. This is what the hadith book do, does. I've gone through the Quran. I've shown you verses. Nowhere did God ever say, go and kill somebody because they insulted the prophet or they offended the prophet. No, it doesn't exist. Nowhere did God says because somebody insulted God, go and kill him. No, it doesn't exist. Nowhere did God says because they insulted the verses of the Quran, go and kill them. No, it doesn't exist. But the hadith, let's see, as simple as it is, see what the hadith incites people to do. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So let's see. I let me maximize. It and let's see what the hadith incites the people to do, as simple as it is, right? Okay, good. Uh huh. And I'll share the screen and show you what the hadith lists the people to do, as simple as it is. Oh, what is this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me share a screen and let's see this. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Saeed Adam. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is the screen, right? Now, this hadith was narrated by Jabir bin Abdullah, right? That's Jabir bin Abdullah. 
Now, this hadith I'm going to quote can be found in what? Sahih al-Bukhari 3031. Sahih al-Bukhari 3031, right? You can write it down. Now, according to the hadith, it says the prophet said, who is ready to kill Kab bin al-Ashraf? Who has offended or insulted? That is God and his messenger. We just came from the Quran. We saw in Quran chapter 33 verse 57. We saw in Quran chapter 9 verse 61. We saw in Quran chapter 9 verse 65. Nowhere did God say, just because somebody offended God and his messenger, meaning we should go and kill them. We should go and bend them. We should go and stone them. It doesn't exist. But right now, I just open one hadith book one hadith sahih al-bukhari which was made sahih by the scholars check what the hadith is saying the hadith is saying the prophet said who is ready to kill kab bin al-ashraf who has insulted or offended god and his messenger then somebody called muhammad bin what maslama said oh god's messenger do you like me to kill him or do you want me to kill him? He, the messenger, replied in the affirmative. Affirmative means he approves that. He says, yes, go and kill him because he mocked me, because he insulted me, because he insulted, he offended God and his messenger, right? So now the hadith said, so Muhammad bin Maslama went to him, who? He went to Kaab and said, this person has put us to task and ask us for charity. That is, it means the prophet has put them to an assignment, right? So Kab replied, by Allah, you will get tired of him. Muhammad said to him, that is Muhammad who was sent, uh, that Muhammad bin Maslama, who was sent to go and kill this Kab. Listen carefully. Who was sent to go and kill this Kab? He said, we have followed him so we dislike to leave him till we see the end of his affair. This Muhammad bin Maslama went on talking to him in this way till he got the chance to kill him. He got the chance to kill who? The Kaab. Now, when you read it into context, who sent this Muhammad to go and kill the Kaab? It was the prophet, according to this garbage hadith. This garbage hadith is saying the prophet sent Muhammad bin Maslama to go and kill Kaab. And what was the reason? Because he has offended God and his messenger. <laughs> that was the only reason. Because he insulted or offended God and his messenger. Do you see what the Hadith teach people to do? So the scholars of this court will now quote these references to their followers and tell their followers, even in the hadith, this is the proof. Muhammad sent some prophet, Muhammad sent somebody to go and kill somebody because he insulted God and his messenger. So you should also go and kill, and they will do it. Because they venerate the hadith more than the book of God. Husband Allah wa al wakil. Lack of knowledge, my people perish. You uphold these garbage books over the Quran. Really? We just came from the Quran. Nowhere did God ask you to go and kill somebody because they offended God and his messenger. It doesn't exist. And I quote, the hadith can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari 3031. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, I see. Abraham B. Moshe. You are welcome. You understand? So we see there is no single verse in the Quran where God instructed the messenger to go and kill somebody because he was mocked, because he was insulted. No. Aha. Uh -huh. So somebody is supporting what I said. You see, Abu Sufyan just said, this is the killing of Kaab bin Ashraf. Yes, that is the hadith I just quoted. This is how the Hadith tarnished the image of the Prophet. But some of the ignorant scholars in the so-called 
man-made Islam we have today, they don't see it. And this is how they incite the ignorant people to go and kill people foolishly and take laws into their own hands. I dare any Islamic scholar out there to come, let's sit down and show me in the Quran where God says, even when his verses are insulted, kill somebody. Even if God himself is insulted, kills the person. Even if Prophet Muhammad is insulted, kill him. Come and show me one proof I'll stop being a Muslim today. Where he says that just because somebody mocked the prophet or somebody insulted the prophet, you should kill the person. There are a lot of intellectual ways to deal with issues. Why will you go out of ignorance killing a young lady just because her words have been taken out of context? It was out of frustration she said the things she said because it was in a WhatsApp group. Yes. So why is it that always, always, the sectarian Muslims, you have to be tagged with aggression? Quran chapter 2 verse 190 is clearly telling you, do not aggress. Do not be an aggressor because God doesn't love those who are aggressive. But what do we have? Sectarian Muslims. You touch anything out of ignorance. <clears throat> do you see where your ignorance will take you? I played Asad Sunnah's video from Nigeria, a Sunni scholar. He is saying among the Sunnis, they even have foolish people that when they, the scholars, tell them to go and kill, they will kill. And he said it about a month before this girl was killed. After this girl was killed, I played another Sunni scholar's video today in this lecture. I played another. He is saying since the prophet was insulted, anybody who insulted the prophet, we should kill him. Bring such a verse from the Quran and show me. Bring and show me where God told you to do this rubbish. Is it not the garbage books you wrote? I, telling lies about the prophet that the same people use to say the things they are saying against the same prophet. You have created a fake one in the Hadith. Is it not the same books you have? Look. I'm not sitting here justifying for people to insult people's uh, leaders and religious distance. Uh, no. But I'm telling you, it is out of the stupid people who venerate these same scholars that these same scholars will incite you to do the stupid things because you refuse to study. Quran chapter 3 verse 78. God is clearly telling you among the people, eh, among the wa'inna minhum, lafarikan yalu'una alisinatahum bilikitab, litaasabuhu min alikitab. We have people who will twist the book with their tongues to make you think it is from the book, while it is not from the book. And they will tell you it is from God, while it is not from God. And they say a lie about God while they know, and that's what your scholars do. Wallahi, the scholars. The Sunni, the Shia, the Tariqa to Tijaniya. Why do you think this issue has divided some of the sectarian clerics? Can you imagine that these sectarian clerics have been divided? When someone speaks against this issue, another scholar will come and speak against him and say, hey, you are a hypocrite. The prophet said we should kill. Yes, your hadith says you should kill. It's there. Sahih al-Bukhari 3031. We saw it clearly. I just put it on the screen. The Quran doesn't condone this arrant nonsense. But what do we have? Islam's image is tarnished because of these foolish people, what they did out of ignorance. And Quran chapter 49 verse 6 is clearly telling you when an immoral person brings you a news, investigate. You have to ascertain so that you don't strike people out of ignorance. And the girl was killed out of ignorance. You see, out of ignorance. That is religious fanatism. Now, I just quoted the hadith, you saw it. Now, I'm taking you to some of the verses in the Quran to show you that even messengers and prophets were insulted. They were mocked. But does that give anybody a license to go and kill somebody? The answer is no. So first of all, I take you, take you to Quran chapter 51 verse 52, right? 
Quran chapter 51, verse 52. You can write the verses down. I'll be showing you in Arabic. Then I translate it to you. Then you see what the Quran says. How messengers and prophets were insulted in the past. So why will you take this issue so extreme? Remember, they are human beings. Quran chapter 51, verse 52. God says, likewise, he is telling you. He says, Kazalika ma'atallazina. Likewise, a messenger did not come to those before them, except they said, a sorcerer or a madman. Messengers before have been called a sorcerer or a madman. Why? Because out of the, what they have been given, they sorcery. People who term it as sorcery, just like we saw Moses, his stick becoming a snake. People call him sorcerer because of these miracles they see him do. So people will call him a sorcerer and a madman. It's normal. It's normal. Being Becoming aggressive just because somebody mocked you or said something you deem as insult and you get angry shows your weakness. Use intellect. Use intellect. Use rationale to strike the person. Don't go and physically fight the person. If you define Islam to be peace, I call it submission. But if you call it peace, then act peaceful and let the world bear witness to that. So stop deceiving the people with your cultism, with your Sunni, Shia, uh, whatever you put under the Islam, um, Islamic umbrella. And stop de deceiving the masses that you are following the right thing. It's impossible for you to be on the right path. Quran chapter 54 verse 9. Quran chapter 54 verse 9. We see the example of Prophet Noah and what happened, what transpired concerning him and his people. Right? Prophet Noah. And I share the screen. So it says, the people of Noah denied before them. So they denied our servant and said, madman. And he was rebuked. The people of Noah, they called him a madman. But nowhere did we see Noah and his people going to fight these people because they called him a madman. No. No. I'm not saying it's good to insult prophets or religious leaders or scholars in that manner. No, I'm not saying so. But what gives you the right and the license to take a person's soul just because they insulted or mocked? You understand? Which means you have taken the person to the level of an idol that you worship. Because if God himself, that... If people mock him or insult him, God never asks you to go and fight or kill people because he has been mocked or insulted. Come on. Then why will you stoop so low out of ignorance? To do, to kill an, uh, a lady whose words have been taken out of context. Quran chapter 26, verse 27. Quran chapter 26. Verse 27. And I will share the screen and tell you what the verse says so that you understand what is being said in that verse. Right? Mm -hmm. So then God says, he's telling us what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh was talking against Musa, Moses. He, Pharaoh, said, indeed, your messenger, he's telling the people, huh? he's telling the, the children of Israel, Indeed, your messenger who has been sent to you is crazy. He's a madman. This is what Pharaoh said to the children of Israel. He's telling Pharaoh that indeed, he's telling the, the children of Israel and his people that indeed your messenger, your messenger who has been sent to you is a madman. It's crazy. That's what he said about Moses. What gave Moses the license to go and kill or his people to go and kill Pharaoh and say, hey, you insulted our prophet, so we are going to kill you. Nothing like that. Quran chapter 44 verse 14. Chapter 44 verse 14. 
Prophet Muhammad himself was insulted by his people. Prophet Muhammad himself was insulted by his people. And let me share the screen and show you what the verse says. Quran chapter 44, verse 14. It says, Consequently, they, the people of Muhammad, they turned away from him and they said, A crazy teacher. Huh? Mu'allamun majnoon, a crazy teacher, he was called. Nowhere did God ask Muhammad and the believers to go and kill such people just because they insulted, uh, they insulted him a madman or they mocked him. Because God says, indeed, we will spare you the mockers. Quran chapter 15, verse 94 to 97. And God says he knows that what the people say will, will trouble him. But then God told him to respite them. Quran chapter 86, verse 17. Uh, 17. Uh, respite them gently. You respite the disbelievers. He didn't say go and strike somebody because they mocked you or insulted you. Come on, that is pettiness. That is weakness. So we see Prophet Muhammad was called, insulted. A crazy teacher. Quran chapter 17 Verse 47, God says, we are aware of what they listen to. When they listen to you, Muhammad, when they uh, solo uh, soliloquies, uh, then the transgressors, that is, they have as their secret conversation, Najwa, then the transgressors say, will say, you only followed a bewitched man. You follow a bewitched man, Rajulan Mashura, somebody who has been bewitched. A spell cast on him. That's what the transgressors told uh, the followers of Muhammad. They told him, you only follow a bewitched man. But we don't see anywhere in the Quran, these believers going to fight just because the prophet was called a madman or a bewitched man. No. Quran chapter 37 verse 36. And they said, do we have to leave our gods? For a crazy poet, they even called Muhammad a poet. And not only a poet, a crazy poet in the Quran. But still, God didn't say they should go and kill anybody. God didn't say they should go and fight. I'm not saying people should insult people's leaders or prophets or messengers. No. But the penalty of going to kill, to going to aggress, going to burn people's properties going to loot, steal people's businesses. What is this? Is it Islam? Is it part of Islam? Then bring your scholars, let's have a seat. Let them prove to us where Islam, Quran, gives you that permission to do that. Let them come. Let's have a seat and let them prove to us. Uh, Lekan Aziz says what? He said, uh, he said what? He said, Daniel Daniel, this is, this is in time of war between Muslims and others. And mind you, you can't understand this verse except you move on to another verses. Uh, what is this person talking about? Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I put my number there. Uh, you can call to, to, to give your contributions on this, uh, topic. And also, you can kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is the link there, YouTube channel here, where you can watch my lectures, my full lectures to benefit from. And the number down below, you can call on WhatsApp to give your contribution on this program. And before I end, I've done one hour, 30 minutes. I think I have some few minutes more to go so if you are willing to give your contribution of what whatever i've said you can call right uh-huh uh said adam says the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance but the illusion of knowledge yes i agree i agree yes isa watson says the, the hadith is making the prophet a disobedient person yes yes i agree we just saw in Sahih al-Bukhari uh, 33,031. 
He just went against the verses of God because God never said he should give anybody instructions to go and kill somebody just because God and his messenger was insulted or offended. It doesn't exist. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, Usif Muhammad. Thank you. God bless you too. Uh, Masbahul Islam says, Salam, Shraib. Thanks. Allah bless. God bless you too. Uh, Abdul Samad Adam says, God bless. God bless you too. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. this guy uh bad bad uh, bad rick yeah bad rick adam said imagine saying islam is not a religion of peace and they they will kill you to prove that islam is peaceful <laughs> i just love this caption if you tell them islam is not a religion of peace they will kill you to prove to you to tell you that you have to admit that islam is the religion of peace i, I love this caption <laughs> oh my god ignorance of my people eh? and it's true it's true uh, badrick uh, adams what you said is true the people will go always go to the extreme to do that benish ansari says exactly the f hadith books tarnish the image of Islam. Yes, it does. And she says, I hate Kufar scholars who teach people to go against the Quran. Yes, I do hate them too. And I curse them. May God curse them. He says, may God curse these mushriks. May God cause hunger, test, and pain in this life while nobody comes to help them. Inshallah, I agree with you. Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, he did such a supplication also. Okay, somebody, I think we have our first caller. Yeah, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam from that. How are you doing, my brother? Well, alhamdulillah, I'm good. Uh, your name and where you are calling no, from? Uh, my name is Mohamed Swari. I am a librarian calling from France. Okay, librarian calling from France. Okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, I just want to give a thing to you and appreciation to God. So I gave you the wisdom that you sharing with us today. And we are learning from you too a lot. Thank you very much. There's many things we never yeah, there's many things we never knew about, but since I started following you, this is the first time calling. I have been listening to your video, video and watching following you for a very long time, but this is my first time calling you. I really inspire with why you you preach about Islam, and sometimes I do some research about what I heard from you and find out the truth for myself. I understand. What I want to say is that, uh, you know, sometimes today when you ask many Muslims that call themselves Muslim, why are you a Muslim? And they will not have answer to give. They might let me say because I was born as a Muslim or because I found my father and my mother praying as a Muslim. That's why I'm a Muslim. But they don't know why they are Muslim. Exactly. They don't choose for themselves. They don't know more about Islam. They don't do research. Like some, I'm, 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 I'm part of that. I understand. We ask me to that also because I was born in the Islamic family. How I see my parents praying, my father, and what they taught me in Islamic school is what I'm going back. But to do my own research about what they teaching me to know forward in that, I never do that. I understand. But I think what to the one thing I want to tell you. I have learned a lot, I have read a lot since I started to follow you. But the fear in some of us today as a Muslim is because of our parents, the background we came from. Because today in Islam to our, our side, when you desire to do something that you believe in, most likely our parents will destroy you. They tell you, say, okay, we destroy you as a family, we curse you, we do, they will do this. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Uh, yeah, the true part of this hadith, I have read it, I have noticed many things. Uh, even apart from your preaching, I have known many people that preach in this city. Even my own track person making a miracle, he did the same thing. My own track people in Nigeria will be criticizing me, even mocking me. Understand? So, we all want to stop this hadith thing. But the fear is that what would our parents say? So, when we try to stop it now, well, I don't really know, I really need advice. Understand because when our parents say that 
they are exposing us, what would be the principle? What can we do about it? Do we follow the parent or do we follow what is the truth? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you what you said, brother. Uh, I agree with you. I think is you are you on still? Yeah, I'm on. I'm just uh -huh. clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, whatever you said, and thank you for your submission and contribution. And you are just you are just on point because uh, it's it's never easy because when you are when you are an underdog, when I use the word underdog and you're trying to tell somebody who is above you the truth, it's always a challenge. Because this this person, be it a parent, be it a scholar, they always deem that they, they are better than you. So who are you to say your mind? And it happened to it happened to Prophet Abraham in Quran chapter twenty one verse I think seventy three downwards or Quran chapter sixty five at Quran chapter six verse seventy five downwards when he told his people the truth concerning God, they wanted to kill him because he's telling them the truth. So sometimes we need to become united in order to solve this issue. And this is why I initiated by teaching people what the Quran actually says, so people can differentiate the real message from what they see people practicing. There's a difference, and it's not the same thing. You see, so thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. And I have one of my brothers, he had his school, his family school center in the The other one is Ima. But today, as I was speaking to him, to the day I would stay in my family to say, I am no longer a Hadith follower. I am no longer a Trinity partner. I want to do what exactly I understand from the Quran and what exactly God's heals. The day I speak that, my parents would have been what Lord did let. And I'm speaking it to it, it's, it's not, it's not easy. easy. It's not. It's, yeah, it's not easy because uh, they have yes. been they have been indoctrinated. Yeah, it's it's an indoctrination, but uh, inshallah, God will see us through because we are working towards that. God help those who help themselves, so we are helping each other, and we will enlighten people to know the truth till these scholars leave us alone because they are putting a knapsack on our necks, and we have to cause this to end. Inshallah. Thank you, brother. And let me let's give chance for the next caller to, to give the May God give you more wisdom. Allah give you more wisdom and guide you and your family and guide you and your family from the evil. Inshallah. Inshallah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. God protect you too. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Okay. Yes, so that's our caller who comes from Liberia. I think he's based in France and he gave his uh, you know. Uh, two cents to the contribution, and I think it it is worth worth it. Uh, yeah, he said. Uh, he said the mushriks doesn't get offended by the insult on the prophet in Sahih Bukhari, but they get offended, go berserk when. Someone narrated the same thing as mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Alam Shah, what you said, that is the point. And they go berserk. And as, as a matter of fact, there is, uh, there is one guy in my country. Uh, uh, he's called Avram, Avram Bin Moshe. I think he was here earlier watching. And there's one time when he took hadith, right? Somebody sent me a video. He took an hadith and he was pinpointing that uh, this is what the hadith says concerning the prophet marrying a CCS old girl. And then all of a sudden, these ignorant people just got, went berserk. And they're like, wow, why will you? And he, the guy didn't say anything foreign. He took the hadith books you guys claim is part of Islam. And he narrated and told people to question these such things. People went berserk and they are, you know, agitated. Now, first of all, why, why are you upset? Is somebody using your own hadith book to tell you what is in your book and you are, are infuriated? Why is it that your scholars, they go to debate with Christians and they take the Bible to face the Christians again? They shouldn't touch the Bible. They shouldn't read the Bible. They shouldn't quote any verse of the Bible since they don't believe in it. So why use the Bible to go against the Christians? So same way, if somebody is also against your religion, your faith, he has to use your same book to tell you what you have there. 
If it doesn't make sense to him, he has the right to say it. You understand? If you have your explanation, you are intellectually, you can win such a person, then you come out and give the proofs. I don't see why you should be offended. Just because something is written in your book, if the person is misunderstanding, sit him down and explain to him better. Simple. You know? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, thank you very much, uh, Baba Amando. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Ni Noti. Ninoti says, how can killing people also cutting their hands by be the way of God? That's absolutely not true. Any form of violence is evil. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, there are certain instances whereby when people take laws and matters into their own hands, this is where injustice is formed. And if you check Quran chapter 4, verse 58, God says we should judge between the people uh, with the with justice, with the truth, right? When we are judging among the people, we should judge with justice. So I don't see why people should take laws into their own hands to do what their scholars just tell them without any proof, any evidence. And, and this is dangerous and it's very, very dangerous. And that usually the scholars, they size up the, the weight of their followers because they know their level of intellect and they know they can control their emotions. So they do say things to the people and then they will incite people to the violence and say, hey, go and kill him because he insulted the prophet. Go and deal with that because she did it. They know the type of people they sent. They cannot come to me, you and I, because we are intellectual. You understand? We will question them. We will ask them questions. And this is what I'm only helping people to do. My videos are out there. I'm only inciting people to learn for themselves, question scholars, ask critical questions. Don't leave me out of it. I'm here. Question me critically. I'm a human being. So I need to use my IQ as well. You understand? So this is why I want people to study for themselves, reason, ask questions, find the right answers, examine things yourself. Then you follow. Don't follow like a sheep. You understand gone out gone out those times uh -huh. so uh he says uh holy boy says salam bro so do we so so do we kill to prove the innocent of islam i'm really shocked how do the disbelievers assess islam if we keep on attributing on this no we don't I, I don't think you listened to the lecture from the beginning. I, I gave the references and evidences concerning how Islam doesn't tolerate such a thing, right? I think it's about time governments should control this, this narrative whereby somebody from another religion will not have the audacity to insult a leader from another religion so that the ignorant people wouldn't go out of their lane. To react you understand and this is this was out of ignorance that the people of sokoto reacted right it is taken out of control and this should have been handled professionally intellectually by the leaders and those involved but it seems those teachings and the preachings these scholars are doing to the people that is what is polluting the masses and that is what somebody like me i'm here enlightening the people to use their reasoning, question things. Don't just let a scholar tell you, go and do this and you go up and do. Remember, he and his family and his kids, they are home sleeping. None of his kids will be part of the killing, going to kill. No. None of his family members or children will be part of those going to do that. No, no, no. They are just like politicians. So be careful. Use your intellect. Question things. If the Quran is telling you that at the time of the prophets, they were insulted, they were mocked, none none was killed just because they insulted god or prophet so how come now the prophet is not alive somebody will just go and say certain things that has been taken out of context and then you go and kill them you put laws into your own hands i'll blame the nigerian government if they don't take this seriously and handle this issue with all diligence wallahi i'll blame them and may the curse of god be upon them if they keep quiet on this issue they have to deal with the corporates wallahi they have to, because what are you setting? You are giving people the chance to, to react like this. I'm not saying people should go insulting prophets and, uh, you know, uh, leaders of, of, of any denomination. No, but you don't put the laws into the people's hand to act anyhow they, they want. No, it's, it is, it's, it's never just. 
Ja. Uh, Muti Muti said, Brother Shwaib, the verse where Muhammad said, That is Quran chapter 6, verse 162 to 163. Where he says, Inna salati wa nusiki wa ma'ayaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen la sharika law. Then he says, wa bizalika umirtu wa ana awwala muslimin. Yes, at the time, at the time he came to his people, he was the first submitter to his people. So he was the first Muslim. He didn't say the first Muslim uh, since the world was created. No, <laughs> he was the first Muslim at the time because he came to call his people to Islam. His people, when you read Surah to Yasin, Quran chapter 36, you start reading from verse 1 to verse 11. So he came as a messenger to warn a people who never received a messenger, right? So he is the first Muslim because God chose him and guided him at his time. Remember, the, he is following the Millat Ibrahim. So start the verse from 161 to 162. 263. So he's saying he's the first of Muslim. It's not contradicting 161. Because he says, Kul, inna ni hadani rabbi ila siratin mustaqim. Dinan kiyama millata Ibrahima hanifa wa makena mila mushrikin. So Ibrahim himself was a Muslim. So Muhammad can never be the first Muslim. When you take such things out of context, then you misunderstand it. So it doesn't mean he was the first Muslim entirely in the universe. No, he was limiting it to his time when he came calling on his people. So Muti Muti Hussein, I hope that gives you the answer. Uh, Isa Watson say, Brother Shaib, that's why they are called extremists. How sad that they destroy their afterlife in this life already. Yes. Yes, they do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Baba Mandu, yes, I agree. Yeah, thank you very much. Ni uh, Noti Adam. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Daniel Daniel says, uh, Amboroba. Yeah, that Amboroba she used. Am, Amboroba is just like a saying the, the, the pennies of a father. Now, the pennies of a father, according to what I heard from the audio, she wasn't saying that against the prophet. She said that against the person who sent the, the audio or video in that WhatsApp group. So it's just like a, a vexing of your frustration against somebody who did that act. But she wasn't alleging that, saying the, the, the prophet Amburoba, no. So sometimes we should learn how to take people's statements into context. We shouldn't be taking people's words out of context, right? Uh -huh. I, do, I do clubhouse sometimes. When we say clubhouse, it's, a app, it's an app where you do audio discussions, right? Like a conference. You know, I've, I've gone several times whereby I give people the clue on how to understand uh, a discussion and context. You know, people can take your words out of context at any given time right any given time they do they do that a lot uh samuel actually i just did a whole lecture on this two hours i i spoke about all this i showed the proof i don't stand with them i don't support what they did it's not islamic it's not from the quran uh however the lady she said things out of anger it was taken out of context which i played the video uh, the audio here this violence was incited by the scholars of the sunni uh sect you know, Asad Sunnah and the other ones, they all said what they said, and then they incited these ignorant people to go and kill the girl. So for me, this is an issue where the girl could have been summoned and cautioned. This is not an issue where you go and kill her. No, no. Quran doesn't support that at all. It's not in the Quran. But it's actually coming from the Hadith, which the scholars brainwash the people to follow, and I'm against it, right? Uh -huh. So Samuel, this is all I can say about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I have to bring the topic to an end. Uh, I have to go back uh, to the family, and I would like to say, Subhana Rabbi Izzat Amma Isifun, Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen, 
walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin and i play this scholars as the sunnah and the other scholar i play their video before i end right yes so thank you natura zuwaga yaran da suke rashin mutunci a social media da tiktok su sani yadda suke jin zafin kai da wauta da rantse da Allah muna da yara da suke zafin kai da wauta duk wanda muka tura muka ce su bugai wallahi sai sun bugai ka ko wanda na rantse da irin mutum muka ce su dauko sai sun dauko in ya kamata su san wannan so da ita wannan da ce wannan da ira iranta da suke wannan rashin tarbiyar muna tura musu sako dukkan wanda zai yi magana akan social media irin wannan to san me yake fada in ba haka ba in ka zo kai mana wauta to muna da wawayen da zamu tura maka sama da kai ba maganin aya ko hadisi mataki za su daukan maka irin matakin da kai na wauta wannan rashin tarbiya ne da rashin mutunci da ita wannan yarinyar ta ainihin wato to saka da an sakai ku kashe shi magana bai da hankali ba ta taso ba to bai da hankali duk bai da wanda yake zagi sai manzo Allah mu ma ba mu da hankali an taba annabi don haka duk irin mu bai da hankali ba mu da da an sakai ku kashe shi kuma ba shi da duk wanda ya taba manzo Allah ku kashe shi bai da hukunci ko belle ya bai taba manzo Allah bai da hukunci illa kisa musulmi in ya tin ya zagi manzo Allah ko ya ce ya tuba wannan tuba ta tsakani ne da Allah Allah amma dai sai mun kashe shi bai da hankali ya sanya ta ya sau waya bai da hankali ya sanya sau data bai da hankali ya sanya bude shahin facebook bai da hankali ya sanda an kayo mai chaya gogi don mahauka ci ka wadanga abubuwa da kun gane ku kashe shi an sakai ku kashe shi kwata kun ba shi dai ba kwata manzo Allah ku kashe shi babu wani hukunci ga zage manzo Allah illa kisa in ka tubo wannan tsakanin ka da Allah ce in ya ga da mai ga amma dai mu na an ce mu kashe ka kwata ba manzo Allah ku kashe shi kada ku tsaya fada mu hukuma a kashe dai in ce ba ba in ce ba daukar doka a hannu to ci ko mutu an ce ya laifi ga hannu yawa haji babu huk babu wani hukunci ba wani tawili da wani zai da ka zagi manzo Allah hukuncin kisa ko limamin maka ya zagi manzo Allah hukunci ne kisa balle wadda iskan banza don ha ku yi tsayin ku nan tarbiyyan nan da shehu dan hudu yayi muku mu alhamdulillah kakannin mu mujahidu na ne kuma jihadin yana nan cikin zukatan mu in kana sun kasan mujahidu na haki muke taba addini ha gani taba addini don haka ga babu babu wani ku babu compromise is uncompromising taba manzo Allah kisa ne 